me, president of the uh, uh, association. Roy, I messed up your title here. Help me out. I had it written down. That's all right. I'm not big on titles, but the organization is West Virginia Home Educators Association. That's it. I was going to call you the Mm -hmm. Homeschool Association. I I had it right in front of me, and I couldn't get my mouse to get it to the right place. My apologies. But it's great to have you with us again, Roy. And the news broke last week, a story about only uh, 37% of parents are turning in assessments for the grades where these must be turned in, grades 3, 5, 8, and 11, for those who do homeschooling. I know there's been some disagreement in the community as to whether or not those numbers are accurate, Roy. What are your thoughts on those stats, and do you think that number is valid? Yeah, isn't that such a troubling number? And, uh, you know, on one hand, you could say it's troubling because it's uh, dismally low. Uh, But on the other hand, uh, you know, just as you said, uh, we're in disagreement on the validity of that number. Uh, I, I don't know for sure what the number is because there isn't a real statistic out there. Uh, This is the first time that it's ever been pushed uh, or told by anybody. And we don't have uh, accuracy, uh, we don't have transparency rather, in the accuracy of that number. So where did it come from? Uh, uh, How did they generate it? And uh, why is it only being brought up now when the government schools are looking uh, uh, at potentially at fault uh, for not following up on this, and then they're throwing out a number that makes homeschoolers uh, cast in a bad light. So uh, I definitely challenge that and uh, would love to sit down with uh, government school officials to uh, to sort through where did that number come from and how was it generated. Roy, can now, you... I've worked with I've worked with a lot of uh, individual homeschool families on that, over the last uh, several years particular. And one of the things that I do know is uh, homeschoolers who turn in their assessments still end up getting letters stating that it hasn't been turned in. Uh, Or they'll know that they're not in an assessment turn-in year. Now, they have to do the assessment every year, but but to remind everybody out there, they have to turn it in on the 3rd, 5th, 8th, and 11th grade years. And, for instance, when they know their student is Uh, let's say at a fourth grade level, they're getting a letter that states you didn't turn in your fifth grade assessment. And, uh, you know, so we know there's faults out there. We know uh, Kanawha County, which is the largest county uh, population-wise in the state and has the largest number of homeschoolers in the state. Uh, Their records were were lost in some way. Uh, You know, somehow or another, they, uh, they lost all the records on homeschooling. And uh, they started who's, who's uh, they, sending Roy? out letters to everybody. Roy, who, who's uh, the they? Board of Education for Kanawha County. Okay. Uh, they sent letters out to uh, homeschool parents that stated that they had, uh, whatever their term was, they lost the records for homeschoolers and were trying to reestablish that. And then they were sending letters to people, particular. Uh, one case that I remember off the top of my head was a student was 11 years old and they misidentified the student as being in 11th grade instead, and the parent had just turned in their 5th grade assessment based on the child being in 5th grade, and then they got a letter stating that they didn't turn in their 11th grade assessment. So there's all kinds of stories like that that I know of, and uh, it's disheartening that these figures come up the way they do. Roy, this is John. Could you give me an idea? What are these assessments? Are they standardized tests on on the – on where they should be at the grade level for math and science and history, that sort of thing? Yeah, so there's uh, there's actually uh, four four total mechanisms, but there's two primary ones, and it's, uh, it's a way to assess the current academic status of the student. Uh, you know, where do they stand? Uh, are they making progress? And we have to assess in five different topics, uh, language arts, uh, reading, mathematics, science, and social studies, and how the parent wants to teach is up to them. But they, they have to show that the student is making progress in each of those subjects. And we have either standardized testing uh, as a choice for the parent to do, or uh, they can do a portfolio review, which is a sample of their work. So for instance, uh, on average, uh, every certified teacher who does these assessments will tell you, I want to see uh, for instance, three samples in mathematics, 
uh, throughout the year. So you would show something at the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, and the end of the year to show that this student is making progress in mathematics. And then that teacher analyzes all of the submitted material and makes a judgment call based on their professional uh, expertise. Uh, is this student showing academic progress in those five topics? And so that's the general two ways that most people do it. Uh, one of the other options, uh, they can either take a test with the school uh, and they can also uh, do an assessment uh, quote unquote as determined by the superintendent so they can enter into an agreement directly with the superintendent to just make something up that they think is suitable and agree amongst them uh, those last two options are generally not done it's the first two options that uh, probably 95 percent of folks end up choosing to do Roy, Bill Stubblefield, uh, let's go back to the numbers very quick. Uh, I listened to Michelle Blatt on uh, uh, on Hoppy's show, I think, last mm -hmm. Thursday or Friday. And this the question was asked about this number. And she said they had good, good bases for that number. And she, was, uh, she felt they were highly defensible. Has your organization uh, sought these numbers to examine them yourself, or are you just uh, are you you're critical of them now? But have you done any research to, for your own sense, to look at the validity of the numbers? Yeah, uh, the answer to that is just no, uh, and that's because it's never been brought up before. Now, uh, nobody either from the government school side has ever mentioned that as an issue, and we've never had a need to know uh, what it was. Uh, if it had been brought to our attention that uh, that was a problem, uh, then we would have uh, sought to, to validate that number. And, you know, here's what we do. Uh, as our organization, we educate our homeschool parents on their role uh, and particularly on the law in homeschooling because we want everybody to be knowledgeable and to comply with the law so they're not getting in trouble. And we could have made a targeted effort to uh, find out where particularly were troubled areas. Do we have certain counties maybe uh, that are uh, a higher problem than others? And we could have uh, attempted to uh, educate people in a particular area, for instance, or just at large because uh, education is our uh, main, uh, uh, main outlet that we do to help parents. Moving forward, now that this number, these numbers have surfaced, will you seek to look at the numbers for and judge for yourself the, the validity? Uh, we absolutely will. And, you know, we want to know the source of the numbers, how were they derived, and, uh, you know, are they actually valid input? Because off the top, we don't believe it's all valid based on the anecdotal experience that we've had uh, throughout the years. Uh, you know, we think it may not be valid just on the face. Let's move away from the actual. But we want to see those numbers. If we move away from the absolute yeah, we value want to see of the, the number, what that data? So we can. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If whether it's 37 percent or 98 um, percent, if, if it's just two or three, I, what is supposed to happen? If in fact uh, the parents don't turn in these the assessments, I presume that's part of the obligation when you're homeschooling. What is the next step supposed to be? Yeah. So uh, they have to turn those assessments in. Well, they have to do them each year. Uh, they have to turn them in on those four years I mentioned by June 30th. So yesterday was technically the deadline. Uh, in some laws, you, if, you, if you have a deadline on a weekend or a holiday, uh, the law will state that it goes to the next working day. In this case, it's not, so we would have had to back it up to last Friday. So effectively, in this year, it would have been last Friday uh, that it was done. And when that's not done, the school has uh, a couple of options. They can just do nothing, which we know has been the case in many situations, or they can uh, engage in investigating that, send a letter to the parents. Uh, hey, did you know you were late on this assessment that we anticipated you should have turned in and give the parents the opportunity to respond? Maybe they're a new homeschooler that didn't know the law. Obviously, uh, uh, ignorance of the law is not an excuse, but we do have to educate people on what the law says and give them an opportunity to comply. Uh, maybe uh, they were having some 
health trouble and they were on track at a point and a point they had health trouble, then they got behind or, you know, various other things. But, you know, the compassionate thing is to give them an opportunity to respond as to why they didn't comply with the law. And then ultimately, if they just say, you know what, we don't care, uh, we're not doing what you want us to do or what the law says, uh, then the school has the option to go to a court and to uh, seek a uh, uh, seek an order from a judge to remove the homeschooling status, and then because of compulsory school laws, the student would be registered back in the government school system and expected to attend government school as everybody else does. Well, when so you say government school, the, can I can I assume you mean you mean the public schools when you say government school? Yes, sir. Yeah, I re- reference it as government schools because it's not public. Uh, Kroger's is a public business. Uh, you can choose to go to it or not go to it. If you do go, you don't have to buy anything. You can choose to walk out the door. Uh, you can leave any time you want. Uh, on weeks that you just don't want to go, you don't have to. But with school, uh, you have to go. Uh, we have a compulsory law that every student under uh, the compulsory age must attend school. Uh, go try to pick up your kid just in the middle of the day for no reason at all, just because you want to pick up your kid. You've got to get permission from the principal in order to remove your child. And uh, if you want to take off from a week to go on a family vacation that's just at an odd time, uh, yeah, good luck with uh, getting their grades all uh, accepted during that time that they were out. So it's not really public. It's a government school. Uh, before, hold, hold, hold on there. Uh, I want to go back to the assessments. Uh, Roy, I'm going to call them public schools if you don't mind uh, too much there, Roy. Fair enough. Yeah. That's what most people do. Yeah. Uh, so when you turn into these assessments, it's at the end of the third, fifth, eighth, and 11th grade school years, correct? End? Correct. All right. Now, do you turn them in to the local school where your child would be going if they were at the public school, or does it go to the main school offices? It goes to the superintendent for the Board of Education in the given county that you're registered at. I see. Okay. So then uh, from there, who is responsible from the school offices for checking on the student if the parent is not in compliance or if the child is not at level? In most cases that we know of, that duty has been delegated down to the attendance directors or truancy officers in each county. And uh, that might be uh, like an assistant superintendent who is designated as the attendance director. And then they usually have a secretary also. Uh, so in some form or another, that team that's responsible for, uh, for the attendance of all students in the county, uh, they'll have that responsibility assigned to them. And they're generally the ones that we see these letters come from on behalf of the superintendent. But the law actually states uh, that it be uh, submitted to the superintendent. They've just used the attendance directors and does to your, cover that duty. Do you or does your association, Roy, provide information during the course of the year to homeschooling families? Yes, we do. So, uh, so we have members and we also educate non-members, uh, but we uh, submit uh, notices out to everyone uh what that deadline is what their role and responsibility is uh we emphasize the fact that they have to do an assessment every year even if it's not a turn-in year uh we educate them on who those assessments have to go to when it is their turn-in year uh we've also started conducting a uh, convention uh last year was the uh first ever west virginia homeschool convention uh we conducted that in uh, charleston and uh, part of the uh, part of the material that we presented there was exactly those legal requirements that every parent must meet uh, in order to be compliant with the law. And uh, we've actually set that convention date for next year. It'll be at the same place at the Charleston Convention Center uh, on February 2nd. So anybody that wants to learn more, uh, they don't have to do it on their own. Uh, they can come to a convention like that and learn uh, what those roles are, or they can reach out to our organization. And we field thousands of questions every year from concerned parents on what they have to do or what they can't do. Roy, I'm Bill Stubblefield again. I'm still trying to get my arms around the assessment aspect. Uh, the assessment is something that is prepared by the parents. Uh, 
what is the level of detail that is done in the valuation of the of the assessment? Parents are obviously going to say they're doing a great job. Their kids are doing a great job. When is there some day of reckoning that comes that says how good are the parents doing with self-educating or homeschooling the children? Yeah, so these uh, these are required to be done that the parent have it done, but it actually has to be done by a certified teacher. So uh, uh, the parent does not get to do those themselves uh, unless they happen to be a certified teacher themselves. And we do have a lot of certified teachers in our community uh, who are homeschool parents, but uh, typically uh, most parents have to go find a certified teacher, and we keep lists of who are certified teachers who have offered their services to evaluate these assessments, and parents can pick from that list who lives near them, or some people do it online uh, virtually where you just send them their packet uh, of uh, the required material, and each certified teacher gets to decide for themselves do I want to see three samples of work for each of these subjects, or do I want to see ten, or you know whatever it is? And they tell the parent, "This is what I need to see in order to evaluate your student." And if in the submission they don't get enough material to make a good judgment, then they can just ask that parent for more. So they're using their professional expertise as a certified teacher to make that determination. Now you asked, uh, you know, what's the ultimate? Uh, determination. The ultimate determination is when that child goes out in society, uh, enters the workforce, enters, uh, you know, has their own family and their own responsibilities as an adult, it's uh, how well do they succeed in that environment, uh, in our society, and that's the ultimate determination as to how successful they are. Yeah, I understand. So how successful is every other kid <laughs> that enters the, uh, enters the workforce. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's the ultimate uh, uh, success, uh, ultra evaluation. But by that time, it's too late to go in and, and make take the corrective action. But I was not aware of the role the certified teacher played in the assessment. I had not heard that before. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah. If, if this can be done remotely, I write crime fiction. So if this can be done remotely, what prevents a parent from pencil whipping all these tests and turning it in? emailing it in on behalf of their child well the certified teacher has to make a judgment call on that so they're they're looking at this material and determining does this look like something uh that i would expect let's say from a fifth grade student uh you know and if it's a uh if it's a master's level thesis that <laughs> that the parent wrote uh would you expect to receive that from a fifth grade student uh, you know, and you can question that. You can ask for more material, uh, more samples if they have any uh, any question about the validity of that. Uh, and and ultimately, uh, they have to make that judgment call. Same is, as a, is there ever a face to face in a classroom where uh, in the classroom you've got to determine does this paper look like it's uh, if it's a forgery or they've uh, cheated in some right. way or another from another student. And is there ever a right to me? Is there ever a face to face component of this in in the assessment where the the assessor actually sees the child? Necessarily, uh, not necessarily the child. Uh, there's you know a parent may take the child, and when we've done our assessments, uh, it's quite often ge generally been a sit down at a public place like a park or a local restaurant or something, and. Uh, uh, very seldom has my wife taken in our daughter with her, except on a couple of occasions. Uh, generally, it's, uh, you know, here's the portfolio of all the materials that we know you are looking for. And in our case particular, uh, we're part of a homeschool co-op. Uh, we meet once a week uh, as a group. 150 students are in our co-op. And the lady who is the director of our co-op is also the certified teacher who does our assessment so she's already seen our daughter uh, on a regular basis anyway uh, she sees her in the classes uh, that are part of that co-op and sees her uh, you know playing as part of the PE class uh, that they do so uh, it varies from student to student on 
what that role is and, and what that experience is, whether they see the student or not. Roy, we're just about out of time. Bill, it's got to be a quick one. It will. One of our uh, local delegates uh, who listens uh, wrote in and said, certified teachers play no role in the assessment. Uh, well, that's actually wrong. Uh, all I can do is say that uh, the law requires that it be a certified teacher. So uh, I, I've got to challenge that. <laughs> That that's not an accurate statement. Uh, I think this, unless this is a different one, Delegate Height said certified teachers are not mandatory. Mine, mine says play no role in the assessment. I'm not, well, From Mike Height. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's patently false. Okay. Roy, uh, I would invite him to look up the uh, code of law is 18-8-1 Charlie, and uh, it's not a very big law, so it's, it's pretty easy to find in there and uh i would invite them to take a look at that law it says certified teacher roy as always thanks so much for your time this morning thanks roy thank you you have a good day you, you too, too sir